Welcome back, it is time for some more Hermitcraft and today is going to be double upload day and I know I said in the last episode that I wouldn't be doing that uh, but here's the thing, I work for an agency and earlier in the week I got a text saying there was going to be no work this week which I was kind of disappointed about because I do like my job uh, but then I realised that I'd get to play more Minecraft so I thought well I can do a double upload then I've got plenty of time to record it with now because I don't have to go to work so I've been uh, not doing too much actually between episodes although I did take down the UFO some of you may have noticed that it's disappeared now here's the thing my plan was never to take it down I wanted to turn it into an iron farm as a little surprise maybe people would notice that there's iron golems falling out of it I'd try and catch that on camera at some point um, so I went up there to modify it I actually laid out a track that came all the way from the villagers over here and build a huge scaffolding leading all the way to the top and I thought it'd be quite simple, I could just put a bunch of doors up there and they would start spawning. Uh, but it turns out you need to do some quite precise measurements to get uh, to get the iron farm actually working properly. So I was up there trying to make the changes and at one point I realised that I would be basically uh, <laughs> rebuilding the entire thing and it would no longer look like the UFO. And at that point I thought, okay, I don't really want to do this because... I'm not really too interested in setting up a proper iron farm, I just thought it would be fun if the UFO was there and it had that farm inside of it. And also, um, I don't think I'd ever build a proper iron farm on Avalon because it's going to be an eyesore. They create those huge pillars, you need like four of them, and I don't, I don't want that here really. And yeah, I was building it and I realised it was going to be a ton of work, so I decided just to take down the UFO because I'd ripped half of it apart anyway. And it's kind of a shame it's gone really, if I'd have thought about it a bit more beforehand I probably would have gone okay I'm not going to do that and I'll just leave the UFO how it is. And uh, yeah I've also been doing some enchanting and I got really lucky, I made two shovels and I got uh, efficiency 4 on breaking 3, fortune 3 on both of them. And they were the only two that I actually made. And I took these with me and what I realised when I was doing this is uh, there's no need to repair it because I want to get unbreaking on that otherwise it's going to be a bit of a waste to use it again. So I'm going to wait until we can enchant books because we're not on the snapshot at the moment and fortunately there's a corruption problem in the nether in the end so we can't use that. Um, but then we'll be able to get unbreaking on a book and then just put it on the shovel and that will save a lot of resources. Uh, we got we got these two working for now and then I've redone all of these picks. Um, so we are looking good again and we still have a full dispenser over there full of fortune picks so uh, now that we've got the anvils it really is easy you don't need to keep a large stockpile of picks um, but what I want to be doing this episode is redoing the storage area here I've, I've got these derpy chests as I call them where I just chuck random items, items in uh, you can see in this one I've been to the blaze farm um, I should really show you that in a video sometime and also Hypno offered me um, a little project to go over there and actually redo it, do all the aesthetics and maybe even improve the blaze farm a little bit and that's a double blaze farm as well and I'd like to do that so if you guys want to see me um, do the blaze farm maybe that's something we could do in a future episode that would be a really fun project um, so basically I don't have enough chests here to store the items that I have and I want to redo this and it shouldn't take me too long um, I'm thinking we're going to get rid of the water feature here and just make these two walls bigger um, but maybe I'll come up with something else as well. We could put some chests in the ground or, you know, just something to make the amount of space that we have more efficient because this is really about how it looks. And as I discussed in a previous episode, I think I did anyway, um, I don't like the idea of storing stuff that I access frequently in the nether because I go in there to pull out um, some of that bulk storage, you know, when you need a big build. And I tend to store everything else down here. So we're just going to cater to those needs and try and expand this a bit. So I was hoping I'd be in for an easy ride and we'd be able to just copy the pattern that we have here over to this wall but unfortunately we fall one block short and I also planned on uh, taking these chests and putting another one behind them so all of these become double um, so I'm not too sure what to do at the moment and also having this corner open like this makes the room feel a little too big in my opinion um, but I got a feeling we were going to end up ripping up all of this and doing something completely different because I was thinking about maybe we could keep the corner sort of similar to how it was by bringing a wall across here uh, but then you wouldn't be able to put double chests in that lead backwards because they would uh, meet up with the ones from the other side as well so I need to do a little more brainstorming and figure something out so I don't think this would take very long to do but moving all the items up here uh, that actually takes a fair bit of time 
And then I've got to reorganise them all after as well, which is a pain. Uh, but it will be worth it, and I think what we're doing here is probably what I'm going to go with, something like this. So we get an extra chest below and above, and that also means we're going to have to do some terraforming, because I'm pretty sure... Oh, maybe not. I thought that was the uh, grass layer there. So this one, there you go. That's the grass layer for above. So maybe we don't have to do that. Um, but yeah, I was thinking of something like this. Now, I was going to do this with double chests all in a row, but we could also do this with single ones. Um, sorry, not single ones, double ones, but rotated on their side so they look like they're single ones. So what we could actually do is just keep the exact same shape as what we have here. So it would be kind of like what we're looking at now, except this would all be one block further back and then we'd have chests in the ground and above us as well and then we'll take all of this stone and replace it with the dark wood again I think that looks really good um, maybe we could try a couple of other materials I'll probably check out a few things uh, but I think we'll stick with that well that does look really nice and I was just thinking about how many extra chests we've got here and um, we've got 12 over on this side and on this one we have 18 more we've got 30 in total so that is a really big increase it's over double and I think that's going to be more than enough for what I need now um, so what I'll probably do is do this on the other side and then I'll put the water feature back in in this space here and I guess if we ever need any more space what we could do is just uh, go back to it being like this but I doubt we will this is going to be more than enough uh, for what I need and uh, on this side over here you can see you've got the stone behind it and the glowstone at the top well you can no longer see the glowstone but it provides enough light that the mobs won't spawn on these bits down here and um, the glowstone is up there above the chests and I've also put wood behind the whole of it and I'm not sure if I do like that it's actually quite nice just to have that little glimpse of a different colour behind it and you can see over here it's a lot browner and moodier um, so I'm thinking I might put something different behind it or maybe these beams here could be uh, like a different material altogether and I was wondering if this would look any better if we filled in the corners like that um, actually do you know what? I don't think that does no so we're not going to do that um, but I'll try and put a few more different materials behind it see what looks good and uh, then I'll make up my mind and copy this on the other side so I've added in some glowstone at the bottom as well as the top underneath these chests and that just makes it a lot brighter which I like and then I've put in um, some netherrack at the back there you can see I do like netherrack behind the chests, but I don't think it suits the brown that we have here. But I was just thinking that maybe some double half slabs would go there nicely. So I'll try that next. And I don't think there's too much point putting them behind these ones, because there's the extra depth. I don't think you're ever really going to see it, but I will give that a try and just see if it's noticeable or not. So you can see it behind these chests, but I do actually prefer it just being like this, nice and plain, because it almost looks like you can't actually see it. And then this is too bright for my liking in the middle. So I think what I'm going to do is pick out a similar colour material. Maybe just normal wood or something that's kind of brown as well. So I've gone with jungle wood behind the chests. And I've done that on both sides. And now all of these chests have been organised. I've even gone and found some of the uh, chests that are lying around on Avalon. Like we had two full of these wooden slabs. Um, I also picked up my chests full of coal. Got loads of this. And I went and got my records as well. I had tons of records over by the XP farm. Um, so I brought all of that over here, organised it all, and now we've got plenty of space, which is great. Um, so next I'm going to do the water feature, and I'm going to try and make it like it was before, except uh, this time I'll be building it from memory. And I've just noticed that that is incorrect. This needs to be over by one block, so I'll fix that as well. Okay, so this is now all finished and the water feature as you can see is different. We've gone for the stairs going all the way around and before this lamp was right here and that was before we had these types of stairs and it kind of fit in a little bit better than it does here. Um, so I might change that at some point but I think that looks okay. It's just weird having this odd lamp like that. Although what we could do is maybe put one here and here and then it might look a bit more in place. And there's one last change that I want to make. I was just looking at this, and I don't think these wooden bits here look right. So what I think I'm going to do is remove them and make them so they're one block further back, and we'll have a little gap like we have there. So what I've gone and done here is actually just replace them with stairs, because we have glowstone the other side. Um, there's glowstone at the bottom and top on this bit here. And now we've got the same pattern below with the wood above, so it merges into the roof, and that looks really nice. 
Um, so that is this project done and now we're going to move on to another one. So I've just been doing some editing and I've noticed that my voice has been a lot deeper than usual and that's because I got morning voice. Um, I woke up and I thought first thing I want to do is just get on with some hermit graph. So that's why I've got the morning voice going on. Usually I record later in the day than this, um, but there is a lot that I wanted to do. And this is our next project. If you remember, we had this tunnel here that we started building a long time ago. That must have been well over, I don't know, 20 or 30 episodes ago. And I stopped working on this because um, of the lava lake that we're going through. Now, the solution I proposed was to put gar uh, glass on top and then that would let the light shine through the half slab so we don't have the glitch with it being dark and it would stop all these lava droplets as well and you know what they really don't add <laughs> much to this I don't like them at all um, I wouldn't want to keep them in um, but the problem with that is it's just so much work and when you've got a fire resistance potion on you're swimming around in the lava ghosts can still see you from up above and fire at you which really slows down um, the speed that you can build this at so I don't know why I didn't think of it at the time, but it popped into my head a while ago that all we need to do is build a staircase that comes down a few blocks and then we can just continue the tunnel at this site here. So I do need to um, keep in mind that uh, there doesn't appear to be lava above this netherrack here. No, there isn't, is there? Because there's no lava droplets. So we'll probably stop at this site here. We need a one block gap above the roof so that we can put in some torches uh, so we don't get the lighting glitch and this stays nice and bright. But yeah, that's literally all we need to do. Build a staircase down a few blocks and then we can go all the way down to the end where our nether portal is and then I'll have to move the nether portal down as well. But that is just part of the project. Um, I'm still thinking about the second part. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to do is finish building this tunnel. So a few hours have passed by. <laughs> okay, one second. There we go, typical timing. Um, so yeah, it's taken me a few hours to do this. We've just got the floor left to do. And I've just finished putting in the lava on the side. So I thought I'd show you this because it's always fun to do. There we go. Oh, it looks like looks like I missed a bit back there. That shouldn't be possible. Because what I've done is I've placed a bucket of lava and a bit here as well. Okay. That is strange. Hmm, maybe... Maybe they've done something wrong with my method. So what I was doing is I was placing a bucket of lava and I'd place it after I'd placed seven netherrack. Yeah, I've done something completely wrong here. Let's just count this. Um, one, two... Wait, that's right, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That doesn't make much sense at all because that would suggest that the lava is only flowing four blocks out from either side of the source. So you've got four on either side, that's eight and one in the middle, it makes nine. Um, but in the in the nether they're supposed to flow out eight blocks, I thought, like water does in the overworld. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to do a test. Okay, so let's place our lava at the end here. And then it flows one, two, three, four, five, there you go, six, seven, and that should be it. So this is the way that I was doing this. I would place seven netherrack in a row, then I would place the lava bucket above, then put the netherrack down, and then put another seven, and start over again. So, let's just see, where's the middle here? It's right there. Let's just test that. No, okay. That is strange. One, two, three, four. Right here is where the lava should be. And I can't pick it up, and it would look like there is no source block of lava here. That is really strange. Um, okay, I'm going to investigate a little more. So the source block was over here, which makes me think that somehow I just got out of sync. And now, yeah, there you go. You can see it's going to flow over the edge here. So we can repair it like that. Um, but then that's going to meet up with this, isn't it? Okay. So it didn't get out of sync. Um, perhaps I just didn't give it enough time to flow. Or possibly, this is what I reckon it's... Yeah, this would make more sense. Okay, so I placed the lava bucket up there, and then I've started putting the netherrack down, and the lava naturally will flow towards the lowest point. So it's gone the way that I've been placing the netherrack, which was this way, and then it hasn't flown back down the other way. So that would explain uh, why it happened like that. And 
this obviously wasn't planned at all. I thought I'd just be revealing it to you, but um, yeah, something I've overlooked there on how the lava mechanics work. Okay, this is all done. The tunnel is finished. Check this out. It's really long. You can't actually see the portal from the other end. And the stairs are all finished as well. I actually tried to copy the stairs that we have around the corner for this bit. Uh, but I had to do it slightly differently. Uh, but there you go, that's how that bit looks. And then if we go around here you can see it's kind of similar to this bit except the uh, roof is different down here. Now the other side of this bit here is the lava on the beginning of the stairs. Because you can see if I just break this nether rack we can hop up there. This is the stairs that leads down to the bit below. So if we ever expand this storage area in this direction we're going to be kind of limited with what we can do over here. So last time we were here at this house I forgot to do something very important which was to credit the donators for their contribution and I decided to call this building the shared space since it's kind of like a, a shared living area with a couple of bedrooms up above. So I've dedicated this one for two people since it took me a long time to build. Um, first of all pronunciations always difficult for me especially with foreign names so I think this is pronounced Tiemo Idzenga. hope I got that right and thank you very much for your donation. And then over on this side we have Virorski, so thank you again buddy. This is also the guy who set up the cube control server as well. So last time we were using these dispensers I was having this problem where they were giving out two items at once and uh, the solution has been sent to me by Converse TV and he explained the bug in a video response and it's one I was already aware of, you see. If I place down this, every other time I hit this lever it gives me an item. But if you power it again from another block adjacent to the dispenser, every time you hit this, you're going to get an item like that. So what was happening is we were we were powering it from below with a redstone torch. That gives us one. And then it would immediately after it got that one, power the pressure plate like that. So that's why it would dispense two items. Now the solution is ever so simple. If we swap this around and we put this nether brick... Uh, above the torch then it's going to power the torch and the pressure plate is going to power the adjacent block but it's not the one where the dispenser is so now when we do this and I've got some ice here as well to make a water stream with uh, I'm going to need one to throw in the water to start it off like that okay and it didn't dispense and then when I pick that up you'll see that it will dispense just the one so I've now fixed the dispenser over here and because of the awkward positioning with the pressure plate i put this extra bit of water up the top here and that's just to ensure that the mobs keep moving when they go over the pressure plate. So that is this one here fixed. We have one more over there at the zombie spawner to do. I'm going to do that in between episodes. In fact I'm heading over there right now but I thought I'd record, show you that and just say again I want to say thank you for your support. The last double hermit craft was really uh, successful and a lot of people liked it so we're doing the same thing again this weekend um, so when we hit a thousand likes you'll get the second episode which I'm going to be recording tomorrow and um, yeah otherwise if we don't hit that it will be out in four hours anyway so you've got that to look forward to um, but thank you for watching as always and I'll catch you next time